Hey, so today I'm working from observation. Uh, I've got my mirror set up over here to my left. I've got my painting and my palette on my right because I'm right-handed, so it's easy to access. I've created a palette. I've got my cools on one side, warms on the other. I've created value scales. See how organized this is? I know exactly where I need to go instinctively as I'm painting. So if I see a reddish area on my face, I know exactly where to go and concentrate on what I'm seeing in the mirror. And so the palette can just stay to the side of me here. And again, I'm right there with my colors. I have a painting that's already partially developed. And so it has a bluish underpainting. And so it created some cool, cool tones to start off with. And then from here, I'm gonna look in the mirror and then look for my coolest tones first. So I'm gonna be working from this side of the palette. So that cool sit back and then eventually I'm moving to medium tones or neutrals and then to warms. So to me, my system kind of works almost like left to right so that I'm creating, you know, depth to the piece with shadows first. I'm applying this with a flat brush. And so it, it's a nice way to kind of block in tone in the portrait. So this cool blue underpainting that you see will eventually disappear. So if I were to continue building into this here, I could then bring in my next tone adjacent to that value shape. And this is called wet on wet blending. So therefore I'm building one color into its neighbor so that the next color that I see in the mirror outside of that shadow zone, for example, the mid-tone, I'll know I'm moving a little bit down the palette and then eventually I'm moving this way to the other side of the palette. I tend to work with, you know, finding the shadow across the form first so that I'm sculpting the piece as I go versus, you know, just finishing one area and then moving on to the next area because that's kind of a patch quilt kind of way of working. But if you need to do wet on wet blending, then you do work one tone into the next. I just take my brush, wipe off the extra paint before I go into the next puddle and then lay that in. Again, if this palette is already set up, I can work pretty quickly and block these tones in. Again, this is called blocking because it's almost blocky and geometric in a way. Then I could take a blending type of brush, like a filbert, which has a softer tone or softer edge to it, and then mix that in. I don't wanna over mix, and then I can actually clean my brush so that I don't take too much of one color or value of paint and mix it into the next. Otherwise, some of that sculptural quality that I created with my blocking will be kind of a, uh, uh, grayed down because there were too much of the same similar tone. Now I'm going to check this and see, I think it needs a little bit more lightness. So my palette's already built up with my lighter tones. I'm going to block this in, getting a little bit more orange now. Because I want this, this light to move forward. The shadows have pushed it back and then the light comes forward. I don't want to overblend. I'm just putting it in. And then I can then go with my, my Felbert, for example, and blend this in for the wet on wet technique. Now I can continue to build into this. This is just creating sort of like the base of the sculptural feel of what I'm seeing. Now, as you do this, you would keep looking in the mirror and referring back to observational situation. I'm just doing this quickly right now. So this would be basic blocking and I'm just bringing in a little bit of like brightness and a little saturation with some of the other higher saturated hues that I'm seeing so that it kind of blends into some of the neutrals that I had. 
I'm not putting a lot of water on my brush right now because I don't want the paint to be too uh, liquidy. And so right now I'm just kind of working wet on wet because I'm working fast. If you're not gonna work this fast, we're gonna talk about a couple of strategies to help you uh, create other ways of building tone and an ability to work in a sculptural manner. So we'll talk about wash, um, dry brush, and glazing. Glazing is when you use a uh, medium, which is like a clear liquid. It's almost like the glue that holds all this ink together with the pigment. And so there are three different basic ways that you can uh, adjust this painting as it has already you know, dried, for example, since I'm using acrylic. So we'll talk about that in a second.